Memorial Day is to commemorate those who have fallen for us to have liberty in this nation. I would also like to honor the saints of God who have fallen down through the ages, that there is freedom today in the house of God. What you and I enjoyed in worship what did not come cheap. It's not just our prayers that ushers in the presence of the Lord, but we are worshiping off of a foundation of blood from the disciples down through the dark ages, the 11 million that were slain, that so many throughout the world, and even today, the number one group of people that is being martyred in the earth today are Christians who believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and now they say it's almost at genocide levels of persecution of Christianity in the earth today because hell hates the name of Jesus. So today I'm thankful for what you and I have. I also want to honor today a man of God that's, been, that's come with us, Brother Timothy Dixon. You are not only loved by this church, I want you to stand. This man is loved by the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We're getting ready to be with Brother Timothy. Um, your event starts June what? It starts on the 10th and goes through what? 12th. It's in Alabama, and um, he's got several thousand already coming. And uh, there'll be, uh, I'm going to preach there one night, I think June 11th. And so we're going to have a great time celebrating the presence of the Lord. This, uh, this morning, um, I just, I've come on a mission because I feel like the Lord has something to say with a prophetic edge to it. And I forget who it was, but he made the statement. He said, the reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Remember that? Well, I can tell you today in the spirit, the reports of the death of freedom and of God's people has been greatly exaggerated. And it ain't over yet. I don't care what anybody says, I feel in the Holy Ghost, God is up to something. And it ain't over till God says it's over. And so... I, I, I want to go back to the book of Genesis and start in the very first uh, chapter. Verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. Bad news is nothing new. In fact, the Bible starts out with a story that it looks like the devil has already won. That's how Genesis starts out. That God created the heaven and the earth. And then I give you some Hebrew definitions that describe what has happened to the earth. The scripture says that it's without form. That means a place of chaos, void, an undistinguishable ruin. Darkness means wickedness, misery, sorrow, and death. And that's how the Bible starts out, that what God had done, the devil had destroyed. You would have thought God would have started out with something really encouraging, but he starts out telling us that what I made, the devil went in and messed up until there was nothing but sorrow and wickedness and chaos and death in the earth. Sounds a lot like where you and I are right now. This morning I was reading the scriptures and it talks about three mighty men that David had. And it said one of them, I think he was the second of three one of them, the scripture says, went into battle with the Philistines, with Israel, and it looked bad, and all of Israel fled except for this man. 
And it says he took a sword and he waded to the Philistines and he slew them until there was not one left. And it says the Israelites came back just to take up the spoil. Today in the spirit, we are going to wade through the spirit realm with the word of the Lord because I feel a holy boldness that we are going to pull down some things by the power of God. We are not intimidated by the enemy. It does not matter that there's chaos. It does not matter that there's wickedness in the earth. It does not matter that it looks like we live in an undistinguishable ruin right now in society. It does not matter because because the Bible says that it was only on the face of the deep. Not the deep. Because Psalm says, deep calleth unto the deep. The deep belongs to God. It doesn't belong to the devil. The deep is where the foundations of God are. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. What you and I are seeing in the earth right now is not on the foundations of righteousness and truth, but it is only on the surface. That's what the word face means. That it looked like the devil was winning, but he had no root system. Whenever there is a large stand of pine trees and a heavy wind comes through, the oak stand, the fir stand, the hemlock stand, and it's the pines that go down. Why? Because their root system is shallow. The shallowness of the devil is in the earth today. And the Bible says that God just simply stood up while this was going on, and it says he hovered. It's kind of like a, a, a hen. One of the words there literally means to brood. Didn't the Lord say that there would be times where he would gather us under his wings? That we would hide under the shadow of his wings. If you could see in the Holy Ghost right now, the wings of God has been spread out, not just over this nation, but from one continent to the another. That while the enemy looks like he has created chaos and an undistinguishable ruin, God has stretched his wings over that which he has created. And deep is calling unto the deep and we are getting ready to see the hand of God manifested in a way that you and I have never seen. When God begins to move sovereignly, he doesn't need you and I to come into agreement with him. He just stands up and says, let it be. Nowhere does it say he looked at angels and said, I need some help. But in the midst of that, God just stood up while darkness was on the face of the deep. He stood up and he said, let there be light. <laughs> The earth lit up. I have to believe that demons begin to run for the four corners for safety because demons do not like light. One of the reasons that there has been so much evil manifested in our government, in our media, is that darkness has been in the earth. But the Bible says, Jesus declared, he said, I am the light of the world. You cannot kill resurrection. You can attack it. You can come after it. But you can't kill resurrection. 1 John says this, as Christ is, so are we. Just because something is dead doesn't mean it's over. Sometimes we as believers forget that God named himself through Jesus Christ, Resurrection. So when resurrection rules in the atmosphere, there is always the possibility of change. 
What God creates and births has resurrection life. That's why many of you, the enemy wants to kill you, but he cannot because you are a new creation, and in you is resurrection life. Vicki, when the enemy came after you, he couldn't do it because there was resurrection life in you. Uh, in this building today, uh, there's not natural life. Uh, there is resurrection life. Listen, the greatest weapon that the devil has is death, uh, but the greatest weapon that God has uh, is a resurrection. Uh, and resurrection life, all Always takes over natural life. That's why God said that we can raise the dead. It may look like the enemy won and buried the rights to sustain our babies, but there is a resurrection of Roe versus Way, saith the Lord, that that God, what the enemy buried, God is raising up by the power of the Holy Ghost. I hear the scream of the enemy because the Lord is not done. Though it looks like it's on the surface, uh, underneath in the depth of our soul, uh, there is a power of God that is resonating. The people that know their God. Too many times Christians get in dilemmas. They just melt. You and I thrive in the midst of adversity. We know that God can triumph. Somebody was asking me this week about how have you been strong with the death of your son? I said, because I'm used to pain. Been through too many battles. I've learned how to triumph in the dark times. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I can tell you this should have been more than about 10 prophets in America that were trying to defend the gospel. And that God was still on the throne. We should have had some pastors that were not prophets that would have stood in the pulpit and said, have we forgotten that we serve an awesome God? You should not be prophetic before you're able to declare what God can do. We needed some saints. We needed some men and women that weren't called to ministry but would still stand up in the workplace and say, excuse me, we got a God that though on the face it looked like it's over, we We've got a king of kings and a lord of lords who rules and reigns. We should not be like Israel who sang the right song on the wrong side of the river. They should have sang that song of deliverance before the sea ever parted and Jordan ever dried up. So in the midst of this, hallelujah, we declare that God is alive and well. I want to read you a portion of Scripture. This is out of Revelation chapter 11. I will give power unto my two witnesses. You remember in Acts it says, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now in Revelations, he said, I'm going to give power. In that same chapter there, he said this. He said, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So though there are two specific witnesses that God is talking about, uh, you and I are also witnesses unto the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and we have also been given power from God on high to stand by the authority of the Holy Ghost. My God, I feel the spirit of the Lord today. Hallelujah. We will not back up with our last breath. We will stand for righteousness. We will not compromise. 
I had some moron write me this week and said if the church would quit causing so much chaos about abortion and stirring up all this expletive, he said. He said, and remember that the word says, blessed are the peacemakers. It's amazing to me how many people that don't believe in the Bible are the first ones to quote it to prove their point. If you don't read it, then don't quote it. If you don't live it, don't remind me of what it says. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to me. We have the right. As many as been saved by the power of the Holy Ghost. And also the idiot that keeps sending me a postcard every other week about abortion and, and Biden quit sending it to me because I read it and I put it in the trash. Don't write me letters to criticize because I don't read them. They're going in a trash. You wasted your time. If you want to talk about how good God is, we'll read it. But listen, we are not here to make peace with the devil. We will not compromise with you. If you don't love God, you are not our friend. We stand for the word of the Lord. Yes, we don't believe in abortion. No, we don't believe in homosexuality. No, we don't accept Biden as our president. We stand Stand on the word of the Lord and by the power of God there is a boldness that needs to get in your spirit and rise up by the power of the Lord. The problem with the church is we have been silent and intimidated so long that we are afraid of anybody. But can I tell you, God has put a power in you to rise up in the boldness of the Holy Ghost. Behold, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. That's what God's after right there. That's what you need to do to the devil. Run him out of your house. Run him out of your nation. You have the authority to do it. So let's try this again. Verse 3, I will give power to my two witnesses. They shall prophesy three and a half years, or a thousand two hundred and three and three score days, three and a half years, clothed in sackcloth. Verse five, if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must be in this manner be killed. They have power to shut heaven that it rained not in the days of their prophecy. Remember last week, I went after Disney? Make no apology for that. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know what kind of retribution long-term that the enemy is gonna try against me but there is an unction in me that we have to defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm not a fan of Mark Zuckerberg. I'm not a fan of Bill Gates. I'm not a fan of anybody, George Soros, anybody that tries to do with the righteousness of God. And so the Bible says that they had power to shut up heaven <clears throat> that it rained not in the days of their prophecy, they have power of water to turn them to blood, to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. <clears throat> and their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of that great city which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, Jerusalem. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies 
three and a half days and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Jason, I'm kind of preaching your first worship song this morning, this afternoon. Resurrection. So, if we're honest with ourselves, a good portion of the church believes that there are things that have died that aren't coming back. <clears throat> and part of the depression is, is that the things that we were hoping would happen and the men that we were hoping would be put back in office have not been. Timothy and I were talking about this, and he was sharing with me a dream he had, but um, God can change the way that he does things. If people don't react the right way, respond the right way to him, he can change the way that he does things. God is sovereign. <clears throat> and so in all of this, Many people feel like that there are things that have been killed by the enemy to a point that the enemy has taken the life out of some things that we are used to, that we appreciated, and it's like they, they won't even let us bury it. It lays in the streets, and the, two, and the witnesses... They hated them so much that they left them in the streets and they wouldn't let anybody bury them. And they came around with martinis and beer and shot whiskey shots and stood around them and had a party. And they rejoiced because these two guys tormented them till they couldn't stand it. And now they've overpowered them. There are seasons where God will allow, it looks like, the enemy to triumph. That's why we go back to Genesis. And the enemy came in. Now, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But hear me by the Spirit. There are certain limits that God draws a line and he says, no more. You cannot pass this line. That's where we are in the spirit prophetically in the earth, that the enemy is encroaching on a bloodline where God has said, uh-uh, you're getting ready to step over into the deep where deep calleth unto the deep. And God says, no, sir. And there is a shaking, saith God. In fact, one of the move, one of the words for where God looked over the earth and he hovered uh, means he shook it uh, and there is a shaking uh, getting ready to hit this nation uh, and hit this earth uh, and everything that is not rooted and grounded uh, in the power of God and his word uh, is going to come down uh, and when it's over out of the ashes saith the Lord uh, there is going to come up out of it uh, a glorious church uh, without spot wrinkle or blemish I don't prophesy to you that much because I don't feel the pressure to prophesy. I think sometimes we've had too many prophetic words because people feel pressure to come up with something else. God only speaks when he wants to speak. But I am hearing in the spirit that just because it's dead doesn't mean it's over. And here's these two powerful men that are symbolic of a church of the ages that has shaken the very powers of darkness. My God, they have done thing, things that only books could re, be written about. And then all of a sudden, God allows the enemy to come in and kill them. Not only are they killed, but they lay in the streets and they're mocked. I have to think that people came by and just kicked the body. Probably people came by and spit on them. Poured some beer on them, said, how you like that? You ain't prophesying now, are you? The arrogance of thinking that natural death, the weapon of the enemy would ever be able to have power over resurrection life is ludicrous. 
If something has a resurrection life in it, it may look dead. It may not speak. But can I tell you, it's lying dormant. But after, on the fourth day, Somewhere maybe around noon, it says three and a half days. They're all partying over the fact these guys are dead. When the resurrection of God began to stir in the DNA, and all of a sudden, that heart in one of those witnesses went. And they begin to stir. I imagine people jump back and go, no, you're supposed to be dead. Well, I can tell you, you should have buried them when you had a chance. Because your arrogance let them out of their grave. I tell you, by the Spirit of the Lord, they should have buried us when they had us. But, oh, there is a stirring of the Holy Ghost. What is that? There is a resurrection anointing of God that is not done, but out of the midst of ashes there is a restoring of, of the power of God I would have loved to have had a video of it but they stood up dusted themselves off said we're back I can tell you by the Spirit of the Lord, I hear we're back coming to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The foundations of God cannot be altered by the enemy. We've Forget some of the principles that God has set. One of them is this. You and I are the physical body of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that many members, one body. When Jesus left the earth, the only thing that left was his body. He left his ministry he left his authority. He left his anointing. And on the day of Pentecost, he married a wife, fulfilling what had failed at Mount Sinai, Sinai a few thousand years before. And as a dowry, he gave his wife that day in the upper room his nature, his authority, his power, his vision his abilities, and his ministry. And he said, you are my hands, feet, and mouth in the earth. So when I am preaching today, it's not I, but Christ in me. You say, but why are you so bold? Because I feel the authority of the Holy Ghost. Because though you cannot see it, right behind me are angels. Right behind me is the Holy Ghost. And they're backing me up. They're backing you up by the Spirit of the Lord. That's why Jesus said, stop being intimidated by demons. Whatever you buy Bind, I'll bind. Whatever you loose, I'll loose. You got to get over your fear of the devil because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, that there would be an infusion of holy authority begin to rise up in your spirits. We're way past voting booths and elections. We're way past campaign signs and presidential elections. This no longer is in the realm of the natural. This is now stepped over into a holy battle in the heavens between God, his church, and hell itself. And we will triumph by the power of God. So you can't kill the church because the church is the body of Christ. 
And Jesus already said that. He said, before he even died, he said, I am the resurrection. Not only is the church the body of Christ, the church is the life and the protector of the nation. This is why America can't die. Not till the church is gone. I get crazy emails. There's so much conspiracies out there. I just got one that China's getting ready to invade the California coast, and they got troops that are getting ready to hit Santa Barbara, and there are missiles that are... Listen, if you believe all that stuff, if people would spend as much time in the Word as they do on Q, they say, well, you know, but that's, that's exciting. That's more intriguing. They're nothing more exciting than reading about two dead men standing up after being dead three and a half days. <laughs> and so the church, this is why the enemy's trying to take the church out right now. Coronavirus was for two things. One, it was to introduce a vaccine. That the other thing it was for was to shut the church down. So they couldn't have church. We didn't have church full for over two months. But I did preach every Sunday morning on my platform with a skeleton crew because we made a decision. We will not go silent and quit preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So... I learned a long time ago, and it helped me in my ministry when I was younger and, and preaching. If I'd have stood up at the age of 25 before a congregation this size, I'd have been terrified because I was used to, you know, 10, 15 people. And if I got to preach to 100, that was a big thing then. But over the years, the Lord began to teach me that I couldn't be moved by what I saw. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, stop thinking that you're only preaching to people that you see in the seats and start believing that you are preaching to spirits in the atmosphere. <clears throat> so when I would preach, and I told Jasmine this, I said, honey, I said, you can't be worried about the fact you're leading worship to 35 people. I said, you got to lead worship to the angels, to the spirit realm. <clears throat> Eventually, it transcended into what we have now, and this is just a skeleton of what shall be. But I can tell you by the Spirit of the Lord, I had a, <clears throat> a pastor call me this week, and he said, Brother Kenny, he said, I want to share something with you. He said, I know that. He said, God spoke to me about you, and he said, you're praying for people, and you're wanting to see them get healed. And even though there are some healings, he said, you're not I think you're frustrated with the fact that you're not seeing people come out of wheelchairs and all of that. And he said, the Lord said to tell you that right now a lot of people that are coming are not coming with faith to be healed. They're coming to believe that your faith will heal. And he said, your faith cannot heal them. They have to come with faith to be healed on their own. And he said, then God will begin to do the supernatural. So I begin to pray since then. God, send us people who are expecting healing that have faith when they walk in the building. <clears throat> Did you know that in Benny Hinn's crusades and, and many others, Catherine Kuhlman's, that many, many people got healed before they ever got healed? Benny Hinn or Catherine Kuhlman or A. Allen ever got in the building because there was an expectancy that, that woman with the issue of blood, she never had a conversation with Jesus. And she said, if I can just touch him. And the Lord looked at her and said, your faith has made you whole. Told her another, she says, that your faith is, so be it unto you. My wife and I love Andrew Womack, and he has such a, a powerful understanding, and he's raised people from the dead. And she was sharing with me, she, she was sharing one of the things that he said. He said, over the years, I began to visualize 
And this sounds so elementary, but he said, instead of saying, God, do it, I begin to visualize that God had already done it. And I came in expecting to see in the natural what I was already seeing in the Spirit. I'm going I'm, to I'm tell you today by the Spirit of the Lord, if you're asking God for things, I want you, instead of saying, God, please do it, I want you to mark 1124, whatsoever things you desire, believe that you have already received them and ye shall have those things. Is there anybody in this house that can get out of the boat and tell God, I want to praise you that it's already done. I want to thank you I'm debt free, that I'm healed in my body. God, I want to thank you that my son is full of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter he's on drugs or on meth. No, sir. When you are declaring things that are not as so they are. Hell hates this church because we are holding back the forces of darkness. When the devil has staff meetings on Monday morning and demons come in, he says, How are we doing? I can hear him say, we're not doing too good in some places. What's going on? Every time we think we got Nashville regeneration breaks out into praise and worship on Sunday afternoon and everything we built up just begins to come crumbling down by the power of God. What are we going to do about it? I don't know they're saying that because there's nothing that works in the spirit of the realm of the power of God. I declare by the spirit of the Lord under every sound of my voice uh, on every continent. Uh, I reverse the powers of darkness that are coming against you. Uh, I loose the authority of the Holy Ghost uh, that God heal you, deliver you, set you free. Uh, every stronghold be pulled down uh, by the power of God. This ain't no time to be half in and half out. Get off the fence. Uh, jump in with everything that you got. Two-thirds of this New Testament was written by a powerful man. Let's see if I can pull over here real quick. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, took him out of the city, left him there because he thought he was dead. How be it? We're in the how be it moment. Well, look what's happened, but how be it? The disciples went out, and their verse 20 of Acts 14 says, How be it, as the disciples <clears throat> stood around him. They're standing around Paul, and he's dead. And they're thinking, Never thought this would happen. What are we going to do? This man fired us up, and they're standing around him, and all of a sudden, the Bible said, he got up. There are some things that look like they're dead that are fixing to hit the how be it moment. Hallelujah. Sovereign things. We forget what God can do. He can take an entire Red Sea and blow on it till one side backs up and the other side backs up. It's so preposterous we can't really wrap our minds around it till we got theologians that are trying to say that, well, 
it was just a low season and they walked across in water that deep. But the amazing thing is God drowned an entire Egyptian army in water that deep. <clears throat> so still a great miracle. I'm amazed at how so-called theologians try to explain away what God says. Well, the flood wasn't on the whole earth. It was on parts. How about just believing what he said? <clears throat> I think the whole earth was flooded. God can do anything he wants. The angel told the Lord, Paul's dead. They stoned him. What do you want to do? God said, but I ain't done with him. Get him up. Stood back up. Wrote Timothy, Philetum, Titus, First and Second Thessalonians. Why? Because God wasn't done with him. We have some chapters to write. Hallelujah. We are not living in the epilogue moment. We are living in the final chapter that has yet to be written. And it's not going to be a sad chapter, but it is a chapter of glory. The last book is not about the demise of the church. It ends with the demise and that old serpent and that great dragon and that false prophet and that beast were taken by the hand of Almighty God, cast into the lake of fire, and the final enemy called death was destroyed. And then the Lord said, time shall be no more. God is not dead. Oh, that the Holy Ghost would give us a panoramic view that the best days are yet ahead of us. We're coming out of our graves. We're coming out of what the enemy has done to us. And there's a release of the Lord. I'll end with this thought. There's never been anybody more hated in the earth than Jesus. The Bible says they hated him without cause. There was a demonic, if you are not sold out to Jesus, then the devil will take control of you. Even if you think, well, I'm not that kind of person, I wouldn't do that. If God ain't controlling you, the devil is. Because I hear me by the Spirit. Nobody controls their own life. You will either worship God or you will worship the devil. And the, the end of all that the Antichrist is after, it's not one world government. It's not a one-world monetary system. It's not a one-world army. It is the earth worshiping the Antichrist instead of God. That's what it's after, the worship. And you will either worship God or you will worship the enemy. But there's no such thing as being non-worshippers. Jesus knew he was going to die. But never does he get his disciples around and say, guys, better enjoy the moment because it's fixing to be over. Because I don't have a good ending. And I, I really appreciate you hanging out with me. But um, they're going to win. He said, guys, he said, <clears throat> they're going to persecute me. They're going to flog me. They're going to crucify me. And he said, and I am going to die. But he said, after three days, yeah. I will rise yeah. again. <clears throat>
The problem was watching the crucifixion with physical eyes, watching the man who commanded demons and healed lepers and raised dead people and walk on water and feed 20,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. <clears throat> Some people made a statement that said, could not he who did these things also prevented this from happening? What they saw in the natural so destroyed their faith that they forgot the miraculous because of what they were looking at in the moment. This is what's happened to the church. We have forgotten what God has already done. <clears throat> We're not remembering what he has already said. We are so moved by what we see and the media and the temporary success that they're having out there that we can't remember what God has already addressed about this situation. He didn't say I was coming back for a captive, vaccinated, destroyed, discouraged church. He said, I'm coming back for a church without spot, <clears throat> wrinkle, or blemish. And again, I, I need to address that vaccination. If you are vaccinated, please don't feel I'm condemning you because I'm not. I think it should be a personal choice. So in this church, if you are vaccinated, if that's your choice, I have no problem with that. I just say let everybody have their own choice. <clears throat> you eat dinner with me, and I'll eat dinner with you, and we just won't talk about vaccinations, okay? Because <laughs> ultimately, nobody knows. <clears throat> Let's move on to more important things. Let's move on to the fact that God is in the middle of doing something catastrophic with abortion. <clears throat> Let's move on to the fact that we're on the very preface of the last great final harvest in which not just in the United States but from continents all over the earth. There will be a deluge of the latter rain of the glory of God that we will hear reports from all over the world. If you go back and you read Azusa Street, there were reports that came in every week from all, oh, every single country in the earth was having revival off of the residue of what happened in a little church pastored by a one-eyed black man that the L.A time said was ignorant and unlearned had no education but heaven opened over that place and released the glory of God if God could do that in a little warehouse with some slack benches and no PA system my God what can he do in this hour so I'll end with this because I know it had to happen. It just doesn't talk about it in the scriptures. Jesus is dead, and you know they have to be celebrating. The, the Jews, it wasn't the Romans that hated Jesus. Pilate tried to save him. Herod didn't really care about him other than he was intrigued by the miracles. It was the religious system. And this saying is being cloaked, and it's going to get more cloaked in religion as we come closer to the end of, the, of this battle. They hated him with a passion, and they've seen him crucified, and Caiaphas and Annas and the Sanhedrin council, and all of them are sitting around, and they're going, man, I just want a party. Can you believe it? We got him. We don't have to worry about him anymore. And there they are, and they're talking, and somebody knocks on the door, and they open the door, and they said, he ain't dead. They said, what do you mean? They said, the guy that you crucified and buried, he ain't dead. So what do you mean? He's over there with the disciples, and he's cooked them breakfast, and he ain't dead. 
Now there had to be terror that began to go through that group of men and women when they realized, I'm telling you, we're getting ready to have an aha moment when the enemy's going to find out that it ain't over. You didn't win. Somehow there's been a reversal. My God is not dead. Revelation says this, behold, I am he who was dead, but I've come back from the dead and I am alive forevermore. And I got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. There is a deep calling unto the deep by the Spirit of the Lord. And God is trying to release out of us a boldness. Gird on your sword. Get in prayer and get over this. Oh, God, please help me. I don't know if I'm a man. Rise up in the Holy Ghost. Begin to see What is that? It's the Holy Ghost praying through you. Get the sword of the Lord in your spirit. Charge hell with the word of God. Stand with me. Most of you are, but stand up. Hallelujah. All God's doing right now is a Gideon moment. He's culling the army. But there is an army getting ready to surround the Amalekites and the Mennonites. And right now God's saying, everybody's afraid, go home. And a good part of the church has went home. Well, we just, you know, we just try to work with them. I don't want to work with them. I want righteousness back. I want my babies to be born free. I don't want my children being taught that you don't know if you're a boy or a girl. I don't want professors in our Bible schools anymore telling us that the Word of God is just a fairy tale. I want preachers in pulpits that live the life. I want anointing back in the house. Hallelujah. I want Holy Ghost worship. I want there to be such a level of authority that when cancer knocks on your door, we knock it out with the blood of the Lamb and the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is a fitting moment. I, I, I didn't really line up this way, but this is a weekend to commemorate fallen soldiers. This is what I hear God saying. There is a clarion call that God is saying, I need you to get in the army. Hallelujah. God doesn't need any more weepers having pity parties. Say, God, I just don't know if you can do it. Then quit praying. You're wasting your breath. God is asking for some men and women today that will come to this altar and stand with their hands raised and say, put a sword in my hand because I will fight the fight.